chased us down in merciful pursuit. To the sinner you were grace, and the broken you embraced. And in the end, the proof is in your words. It's in the end, the proof. We are so happy that you're here today. Thank you for being here. It's, it's kind of cool out today, but you know what? If you look at the weather report, it's going to get up into the 50s this week. There's going to be this thing that maybe some of us have forgotten about. It's called sunshine showing up this week. And I've even saw in one report that it could get up to 60 on one of the days that's almost that's going to seem unbearable almost like an 80 degree swing from what we were having but i'm excited about that and uh, we've been doing something that has been to me such a gift we have been praying and we began a, a something called fast forward and we've been calling people to 21 days of fasting and praying and um and not necessarily fasting from food sometimes fasting from uh the internet or fasting from uh just social media in general uh some people are fasting from other things that get and then replacing it with something that is brings us to christ like prayer and it's been a beautiful thing. We've got seven more days to go. And I want to invite you to join us for that. Because God is doing amazing, beautiful things. And uh, you can even join us online. We do it every single day. And some people come in. And there's, a, there's links right there on our Facebook page. If you're fasting from your social media, that makes it a little hard. But we will uh, get you the link. But we're fasting, I mean, we're praying together for just half an hour at 6.30 in the morning or at 6.30 in the evening. And that makes it kind of easy. And some people do both. And each day we have a theme. We've been praying for our families. We've been praying for our marriages. We have been praying for our kids and grandkids. Today, though, we're praying for endurance. And we're praying for uh, stick-to-itiveness, if you will, and it makes me think of that, that passage in, in Revelation where John looks out and he sees this group of people coming and their, their robes are white. And John says, who are these people? And then, and then the answer is, these are the ones who've come out of great tribulation. In other words, these are ones with endurance. So I invite you, I invite you to join us so it's at 6.30 a.m. or 6.30 p.m. or both. And it's just a half an hour. And it's beautiful. It's not threatening or anything. And even if you can't do that, I invite you to pray this week. Pray for our church. Pray for the direction of this year. Pray that 2024 is something that will be a beautiful thing for our own personal walk with Christ, with, uh, our, with our own uh, 
life here at the church. And I'm going to invite Virginia to come up. Well, uh, we're going to have our family focus. One of the reasons that a lot of our people are missing today, if you're wondering. So at College View Academy, we have um, a couple of things happening. Not Academy, College View Church. Uh, our Pathfinders and all the leaders are at Honors Fest, where they were spending the whole day getting honors. And we even had Pastor Dana, she was teaching one on prayer. Uh, they've got honors about everything nowadays, ones that didn't exist when I was a Pathfinder. We also have a uh, youth and young adults uh, gathering there that some people are at. So a lot of them are there. And uh, But I'm glad that you're here today. Thank you for worshiping with us. And oh, there's Virginia. So, and how was your week, Virginia? You know, it was good. Did anybody notice it was warmer? I noticed <laughs> it. I noticed it for sure. Does anybody know if when the sun's coming back? Monday. Sunday? Monday. 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 I thought it was today. We need mm. it, don't we? That's what we're praying for. That's Mike. right. Pray for some sunshine. Praying for some sunshine. We're fasting from <laughs> sunshine, apparently, of late. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Tell us how your week was. Yes, Patricia. Well, uh, tomorrow is actually going to mark a very, very great day. Two years officially of quitting smoking. Wow! Amen. Congratulations. That is worth celebrating, isn't it? That That's is fabulous. That's fantastic. Very good. Who else? Who wants to share some good news? I have some good news. Good news. I can see Greg and Carolyn are back, and they've been, they've been out. Yeah, Wait a minute. We feel a little sorry for them I because know. they've been in Florida in I this know. whole time of cold. They were in the nice beaches of Florida suffering through that. I know. That's terrible. And, you know, Peggy was in Cancun. So, you know, we have oh. to feel bad about that, too. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough. <laughs> we are survivors, right? And we made it. <laughs> Absolutely. Who else? Something they want to share that's good. How's God helped you this week? God's helped me. Sam over here has got one. Sam, okay. Well, I just want to thank everybody for praying for me. I'm doing much better. Praise the Lord. And uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you're looking my, good. Thank you. I'm going to just uh, thank my Lord for Friday. We celebrated 58 years married. Wow. So praise God. Whoa. Fantastic. That is great. Absolutely. That's fabulous. Yes. Jackie. So, first of all, Patricia, congratulations because you've done something that I have been struggling with for 30 years. Um, and this week, I went in to an ear, nose, and throat specialist because my doctor and I thought that I may have tongue cancer. And so they did a biopsy on my tongue and it came back cancer free. Wow, Yay. fantastic. However, uh, the harder I try to quit smoking, it seems like the more that I smoke. So I could really use some prayers on kicking this nasty habit that's killing me. Absolutely. We need to, to pray for that. Who will take that prayer request? Oh, Patricia, she says, I'm a, I'm a champ at this one. I'm going to take that request. Absolutely. Habits are hard to break, and I think that's one of the toughest ones to break. Mm -hmm. Who else? I have one. You have one. Yeah, Good. In my philosophy of education class, we usually, we, we always read the books for education, but in the past, I've spread it out over the semester. This time, I'm doing it all in one five-week period, and I can see so much appreciation and growth on the part of those college students, and I really praise God for touching their hearts with that book. Fantastic. Amen. Very good. Very good. Wow. How about prayer requests this morning? Do we have any? Yes. Right back there. I work with a lady. Uh, her name's Lilia. Lil Lilia. 
Mila. <laughs> she has uh, brain cancer. She's uh, had it for quite a while, had a major surgery um, a number of years ago, and then just recently had to go back in and had a minimally invasive surgery. It's in the back of her eye. So um, if someone could pray for Le Leah, um, that would be awesome. Thank you. We'll take that prayer request. Uh, Josie, you're going to take that request? I, I have a You've got a request. request. Yeah. Um, we have a teacher, a former teacher at Skyview, a sweet woman, uh, lost her baby. Uh, about uh, seven months um, into her pregnancy, still had to go through the delivery and everything. And, and I just pray for her and for her family. And uh, her name is Pama. And we, at Skyview, we all love her to death. And we just pray for her, too. So Name Pama. again? Pama. 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 That's different. Yeah. How do you spell that? P-A-M-A. -A. Just like it sounds. Who will take that request? Uh, Olga, you're going to pray for Pama all week long. Who else? Prayer request. Yes. Right over here. Right over there. Still requesting continuing prayers for our grand niece, Callie. She's not in ICU, but she's finally in rehab. And who will take that prayer request? Over here, Paula. Paula, you'll take that request? Yes, Angela up here. Um, I'm flying out this afternoon to see my friend in Tennessee whose boyfriend killed himself on Christmas Eve. So just for safe travels and then just for my time with her that I can be a light in her dark world right now. Absolutely, and who'll take yeah. that request? Yeah. Dana is going to take that request. Any additional requests? Let's bow our heads. Kind Father, you know, we're your children. You know what we need. You love us. You care for us. You understand us. And you're going to come take us home. But while we're here, bring us comfort. Bring us joy. Keep us connected to you. We pray this. Amen. 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 You know, it's so good when God's people come together and praise the Lord. I love that passage that says, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. I want to invite you to stand. Let's sing this great gospel song. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everyone, just lift it up, sing it out. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burden down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burden down. Oh, I feel better, so much better. I feel better, so much better. Yeah. 
bow down. Glory. Father God, we come before you today. We want to glorify your name. We want to praise you. We want to lift you up as high as we possibly can and say, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, I pray that everything we do will bring you glory today. That it, you will be blessed with our singing and our, our fellowship and our, our just time together. Be with the message. Lord, I even pray that you be with our snacks. May it all just bless your heart. And you've invited us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We're honored to answer that invitation. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I love this song. Let's do this one. In my wrestling and in my doubt. In my failures, you won't fall out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea.
singing in Nebraska where we don't have a very many lighthouses. There's I one. still <laughs> love that song very much. So this is a great song here that is an old song and uh, but it's a good song. We sing it not because it's old, but because it's good. And some of you might even remember this song when maybe when back in the days when you were in camp or something. But it just says freedom. When we get to that part, there is freedom. You can't help but just want to just clap your hands and sing. Remember this song. This one goes back. We've got a few. <laughs> got a few. I'm wondering if I could get everyone to stand for this so last song here. How great is our God. When we get to that part that just sings, How great is our God, don't even worry about the person next to you. Just throw your head back and sing it to God and just say, How great is our God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness hides to hide, he trembles at 
wonderful to hear in, in so many ways already today in, in our Sabbath school classes and in the prayer times of the work you're doing in people's lives, the blessings of birthdays, the blessings of release from troubles like addictions. Thank you that you are the God of hope and you are the God of power and strength and you've loved us from the beginning and we get to share that beautiful truth with people everywhere we go and it is an honor and I pray that you'll open our eyes and ears for ways to continue to uplift those in our sphere of influence. Thank you for this Sabbath. Thank you for the message. Thank you for everyone who is here and the ministries going on elsewhere in the city, especially lift them up too. And thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Ooh. Oh, I want to invite our deacons to come forward, and uh, we're going to collect our offering. And what a blessing it is. We just had our board meeting this last Thursday, and one of the things you get with a board meeting is you get a financial report. And can I just say thank you? What a blessing it is that people have been so generous, and we have enough, of course, to fund our ministries and even begin to dream bigger. And I love that, that we can dream bigger. And all good gifts come from him. And this is just a way to say thank you. All loose offering goes to uh, the Ministry of New Creation. You can also give, though, at newcreation.community. 
or if you're technologically hip, you could use the QR code and uh, that'll take you right to the site there that'll give you a list of all ministries that you can donate, including tithe, because we are part of a global community. We're part of a global church that is reaching the world. So you can go and, and just give that way anytime. Let's just pray. Father God, thank you for the good gifts you give us because all good gifts come from you. This is just a nice, or, or a small, just a small thank you at your incredible generosity. And I pray that you will take it and grow it, expand it, do amazing things with how little it is expand your kingdom in Jesus name amen and the worship band we're gonna we're gonna play a little music here You know, I don't know how many of you know this, but the worship band, they work very hard. And I wonder if you could give them a, a hand. They, 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 they were here last night practicing. They got here at 7.30 in the morning, like they do every Sabbath morning. and uh, they, But they do it out of joy and love because it's, it's, they're working in their giftedness. Hey, I want to invite all the kids to come forward, but before they do come... I want to let you know that we have a lamb's offering, which means if you would like to give to our lamb's offering, what it is is that it's, it's money that goes to our benevolent fund. So all you have to do is hold up some money and I, some kids will come and, and bring it and they can stick it right here in our church here. There's a little slot right here. And uh, so you just come and so all you have to do is wave a little money and our kids will grab it. And I'm not sure what kind of habits that's teaching our kids or not, but the uh, but come on forward. But we have a very special a storyteller today, and it's Jackie. Jackie Gab, Jackie Barker Gab is coming, and she is going to be telling us a story. And I'm so excited. So all kids are welcome to come up. All kids, anyone who identifies as a kid or anyone who just wants a good view of the story, Come on forward. We've got lots of room up here. So come on up. Oh. We come on up here. You can sit right here with Jackie. Come sit right with her. I might need your help getting up when we're done here. Oh, okay. Where's Preston? Come sit right here. I told this story. I read this book about probably 13 years ago when Preston was just a little kid. And... Um, he was trying to sit by me, but there was no room, and he got really upset. So he sat over there a little bit and just kind of pouted through the whole thing. So I asked him if he would come up here and sit right next to me so he could see the pictures this time. 
<laughs> but this is definitely not enough people. We need to squeeze in really tight. I see a lot of young people over here. Come on, I need your help, you guys. This is, this is a great story. If you feel young at heart, we got to squeeze in really, really, really tight, though. Scooch over, Preston. Is this enough, people? Okay. So in this story, there's a part where it goes, because we're going to pretend like we're on the ark, Noah's ark, and it goes the ark swayed this way and that way and that way and this way. So every time we read that part, or I read that part, we got to do the motions of the boat, Okay. This is called Zoomer the Monkey Helps Mr. Noah. Elizabeth, come sit right here so you can see the pictures. Help, help. I need help, cried Mr. Noah. This ark is so big and it swerves this way and it swerves that way and then it swerves this way and it swerves that way. I need lots of help. Zip, zip, zoom, came Zoomer the monkey. Can I help Mr. Noah? Noah, asked Zoomer. Helping is what God wants me to do. Oh, yes, Zoomer, said Noah. You can be my helper. Suddenly, the ark began to swerve, and it swerved this way, and it swayed this way, and then it swayed this way, and it swerved this way. Thunk, clunk, ouch said Mr. Giraffe. Ouch, ouch, said Mrs. Giraffe as their heads hit the top of the ark. Zip, zip, zoom, went Zoomer the monkey. Snip, snap, Zoomer lifted the latch on the hatch. Oh, thank you, Zoomer. This is so much better, said M Mr. and Mrs. Giraffe together. You are a fine helper. Just then, the ark began to swerve and sway this way and sway that way, then this way and that way. Ox, walk, cried Mrs. Buzzard. Bitty baby buzzard has fallen out of the nest. Ox, walk, oh no, please don't sit down, Mrs. Hippopotamus. Zip, zip, zoom, went Zoomer the monkey. Swish, swish, swoop, swish, swish, soup, scoop. Oh, this is getting harder to read every year. Plop, flop, went Mrs. Hopipo Mrs. Hippopotamus. Yay, hooray, cried Mrs. Buzzard. You are a fine helper, Zoomer. Once again, the ark began to swerve and sway this way and that way, then this way and that way. The spiders got dizzy. The ants scurried in a tizzy. Grr, grr, growl, the lions grumbled. Grr, grr, growled, mumbled, the tigers mumbled. Oh, yuck, cried Miss, Mr. Yak. His poor tummy rumbled. This is not fun. Zip, zip, zoom, went Zoomer the monkey. Zip, flip, flip, zip. Zip, flip, flop. Did I read that right? <laughs> Zoomer did lots of swoops and loops and swings and flings and all sorts of funny things. Ha, 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 roared the lions. Ho, 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 laughed the tigers. Tee, he, he, giggled the ants and spiders. Yuck, 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 chuckled Mr. Yak. Do some more funny tricks, Zoomer. Oh, thank you, Zoomer, said Mr. Noah. You are a fine helper. Helping is what God wants me to do, said Zoomer, and it makes me feel good inside. But right now... I think I will go hang out for a while with Mrs. Zoomer and my friends. And he did. The end. Thank you for coming up here. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Yeah. I think I remember Preston being a little kid hearing that. Hey, if, look around. Look at the person beside you, to the front of you, and behind you. Just welcome them. Tell them you're glad that they're here today. Say, I am so glad to see you this Sabbath. Just tell them, you know what? I don't know your name, 
You don't know my name. Let's get acquainted. Oh, I love that. I'm just going to tell you that the Noah's Ark looked a little rougher on this side over here than it was on this side. We have been working our way through the book of Galatians. And it's the oldest book in the New Testament. The first of all the books of the New Testament to have been written. It's written before... Matthew, Mark, or Luke, or John, written before any of the, Paul's other letters. And it's been, it's been such an exciting adventure for me, and, and I'm excited about what Paul has for us today. I'm wondering if I could invite you to stand with me, and we're going to stand. The reason why we stand is it allows us a moment to focus on the Scripture. We're going to be reading from... Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. And uh, this is written, of course, to a very specific audience. But because it's Holy Spirit inspired, and I believe that with all my heart, it's also written for us. It's also written for us. And there's something here the Holy Spirit wants us to learn. So I invite you to just focus on these words. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And here we go. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. How foolish can you be? After starting your new lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? Have you experienced so much for nothing? Surely it was not in vain, was it? I ask you again, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. In the same way, Abraham believed God. And God counted him as righteous because of his faith. The real children of Abraham, then, are those who put their faith in God. What's more, the scriptures look forward to this time when God would make the Gentiles right in his sight because of their faith. God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. But those who depend on the law to make them right with God are under his curse. For the scriptures say, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the commands that are written in God's book of the law. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for Scripture. Thank you so much for your Holy Spirit who helps to be our teacher as we open up Scripture. And I just pray for that miracle today. I pray that the Holy Spirit who fell on those apostles, the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that Holy Spirit will descend on us right now, that, that he will speak to us. Father God, I pray that each person will hear from the Spirit the exact message he or she needs to hear today. And I pray that we will leave with that because, because each of us is on a path. And the Spirit knows each of us. Father God, I thank you so much for your love and blessings, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So this may come as a surprise, 
But the vast majority of people in the first century Western world did not consider Christianity to be a religion. Most Christians back then did not consider Christianity a religion. The apostles Peter and Paul and John, none of them considered the way of Christ to be a religion. The main reason religious Romans hated this new sect was because they didn't believe it was a religion. And Roman thinkers and philosophers called Christianity atheist. And they called it that in part because Christians didn't believe in the gods, but more because they didn't view Christianity as a religion. It had no temples, sanctuaries, rites, or cultic practices, or even priests as far as they could see. Christianity did not fit the tidy definitions people were used to. And so the Romans feared it, mocked it, and found themselves disgusted by it. The primary reason the vast majority of people back then did not believe Christianity was a religion is this. Because Christianity, of the apostles at least, is not a religion. Religion, as a word or idea, has become kind of entangled with so much baggage. But its meaning remains intact. Religion, by definition, is a set of rules or rites or practices or traditions to appease one's gods or God. Islam, for example, is a religion. It's a huge truckload full of rules and practices one must follow in order to appease Allah. Buddhism is a religion. Not the Hollywood pop Zen version of Buddhism, but real Buddhism. It's an even bigger truckload of rules and practices one must follow in order to appease the universe. Hinduism is a religion. It's an even bigger truckload of rules and practices to appease tens of thousands of gods. The overwhelming amount of rules and practices in both Buddhism and Hinduism are so weighty that it will take a devoted follower thousands of lifetimes to eventually achieve them all. Judaism. Judaism is a religion. Through Moses, God gave a ragtag band of former slaves five books filled with rules and practices that one must follow, but with a difference. Whether the Israelites understood it or not, those rules and practices and rituals and feasts and festivals were neither random nor arbitrary. Each pointed towards something remarkable and sublime, sublimely unique. They pointed toward a Messiah, toward a new covenant, toward a new kingdom, and a relentless God who adores his people. And this Messiah, our God, would come and call his people out of religion and into something else. Because Christianity's God, our God, cannot be appeased by obedience to any rules or practices. What's more, our God is a righteous God, and his expectations are too lofty for sinful human beings to achieve anyway. And so, our God accomplished his own expectations on our behalf, including taking upon himself our deserved punishment for failing. And so you see, we cannot make God love us. Because he already does. He already does. And has loved us since the foundation of the world. And we cannot make God forgive us because he already has. He forgave us once for all and he paid what debts we owe on a Ro Roman torture device. We cannot earn any more forgiveness because we can't 
be any more forgiven than we already are. Our God. Our God. Elohim. Yahweh. El Elyon. El Shaddai. Shekinah. Yeshua. Jesus. He seeks only that we take Him at His word. That He is good. That He adores us. And that He truly accomplished on our behalf what He says He has accomplished. And we believe. In spiritual terms, there's a, there's a word for that. We call it faith. And from that precise glint of belief, it hits us. In that moment, we truly believe a miraculous thing occurs. It happened to Abraham. He believed and it was counted to him as righteousness. It happened to Matthew when Jesus called him out of his tax booth. It happened to Simon Peter out there on his fishing boat. And it happened to that hapless thief on the cross. It happened as well to Saul of Tarsus on the Damascus road. A miraculous thing happens. The same thing that has happened to most people here, I believe. It's called grace through faith. In simplest terms, our old selves die. And all that's left inside of us is Jesus. If that's a little too weird to grasp, how about this? In that moment of belief, by His grace, we suddenly see what we can't unsee. No matter how hard we try, we, tr we hear what we can't unhear, and we know what we can't unknow. We see Jesus in all His absolute beauty. We catch a glimpse of who God really is, and we crave what we see. Likewise, we see who we really are and how God sees us. And there is just no going back. Theologians have a word for this. It's called justification. The act of declaring us righteous. And in that moment, we are not positionally righteous. We're not metaphorically righteous. We are not Austin, uh, ostensibly righteous. No, we are thoroughly righteous. We are absolutely right with God because we are given the righteousness of Jesus. It's what Paul means when he says we are saved by grace through faith. It's what evangelicals call getting saved. It's what Jesus meant when he said we must be born again. And perhaps the most remarkable part is how God then transforms us remakes us, overhauls us from the inside. Having taken hold of our hearts, He restores the rest, this body of sinful flesh, and He resurrects us, and He makes us new. And that's what theologians call sanctification, making us holy. The full miracle of metamorphosis from caterpillar to butterfly is at once fully inside of us, all of it. And God gives us the grace and the blessing of watching that miracle at work in us every step of it. There's no method. There's no strategy. There's no checklist. There's no program. And our God does it all. And we let Him. And that's not religion, friends. That's not religion. That's called relationship. That's called covenant. That's called the way. So Paul and Barnabas spent three years in Galatia teaching this radical new relationship to anyone who would listen. And those who listened and believed experienced a miraculous death to self and rebirth in Christ. They experienced radical freedom in the Messiah they experienced baptism of the Holy Spirit, victory over sin, victory over addictions, victory over death. But here's where the story gets sad. Here's where the story resembles the sad tale played out over and over and over again throughout 2,000 years of Christianity. 
when Paul and Barnabas left Galatia to reach more people with this radical good news, they must have been exhilarated by what God had accomplished there. But Paul's letter to the Galatians makes it clear that someone came to town after they left. Whoever it was, they turned the way of Christ into something dreadful. Someone came after them with a different gospel, turning the relationship into religion. Paul writes, oh foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? So tell us what you really think, Paul. For the meaning of Jesus Christ's death was made as clear to you as if you had seen a picture of his death on the cross. That is, they had seen what they could not unsee. And while that was still true, that didn't mean what they experienced couldn't be repackaged into a series of rules, into a checklist of works, into a religion. So Paul goes on, he says, let me ask you a question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit because you believed the message you heard about Christ. See, they received everything, salvation, absolute righteousness, an unexplainable peace, and the Holy Spirit. And they received the whole shebang by having faith in or, ha or believing in the outrageously amazing message of God's grace. So Paul's just warming up here. He says, how foolish can you be? After starting your new lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own effort? In other words, why are you trying to turn the miracle of faith into a religion? He says, have you experienced so much for nothing? Surely it was not in vain, was it? Hear, hear the anguish in Paul's voice here. I ask you again, he says, does God give you the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. Now Paul's using some pretty harsh language here in Galatians. Some of the harshest language he will use in any letter. In most translations, he calls them bewitched and foolish. And these are not frivolous words tossed about lightly. In particular, the opening verse of chapter 3, he says, O foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? And we're more familiar with the old translation that says, who has bewitched you? The word Paul uses here is surgically precise. It's the verb ibaskanin. Ibaskanin. Try that with me. Ibaskanin. Look at your neighbor and just say ibaskanin. And translators are right with that word to translate it as they do, bewitched. A more literal translation might be this, who has cast the evil eye on you? Now the New Living Translation, I think, actually nails it here when it says, oh foolish Galatians, who has cast an evil spell on you? The word is not used often in Scripture, but it nearly always refers to the practice of witchcraft, or the occult practice of magic. And by that I don't mean the fun sleight of hand stage magic. No, it's referring to black magic in its original sense. That is, by performing specific acts or rituals, concocting certain spells, speaking certain words or incantations, one can achieve a desired result. Like witchcraft. Witchcraft is religion in its basest, blackest form. It's a quid pro quo between the practitioner and the spirit world. It's the belief that one's actions can force the divine hand into a spiritual reaction. If I do this, God must do that. If I say the right words, often in the right order, well then God is obligated to answer my prayer. Or if I obey certain commands or speak the right mantras, eat the right foods, wear the right clothes, God will be obligated to forgive me and to save me. 
Paul's accusing the Galatians of succumbing to that kind of witchcraft. Now, please listen carefully. Hear what I'm saying. And please also hear what I'm not saying. All legalistic religion in which God's goodness toward us comes as a result of our actions toward Him. All works righteousness hovers at the edge of witchcraft. Or what sociologists call magical thinking. Make no mistake, God absolutely desires His children to be obedient. But never, ever in order to earn His love or His generosity. Rather, it's because we already have His love and generosity. The individuals who threatened Paul's gospel in Galatia were a pretty commonly known group among the new converts called the Judaizers. They were Jews who believed Jesus to be the Messiah. But they believed Christians should continue to practice, practice Judaism and they wanted the Gentiles to be Jews or to be made Jews. They wanted Christianity to revert back into religion. And Paul knows this. So he pulls out Judaism's trump card. He plays the Abraham card. He writes this, In the same way, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. Now let's get this clear. Abraham was no model of perfection. He questioned God. He took matters into his own hands and into his own bed. And he twice attempted to pimp his wife in order to save his own skin. But he had faith. He believed. And that belief motivated the upward tra trajectory of his life. That faith was his salvation. Paul writes, the real children of Abraham then are those who put their faith in God. Notice Paul's line of argument here. Abraham's righteousness was not garnered by anything he did, but rather by God's grace alone through his faith. And everyone, everyone who accepts God's grace through faith is automatically a real child of Abraham. One doesn't need the right family tree. One doesn't need to be circumcised or to follow the rites and rituals of the Jewish law. One need only believe. Paul goes on. What's more, the scriptures looked forward to this time when God would make the Gentiles right in his sight because of their faith. So not by works, but by faith. Just like Abraham, the Gentiles were not an afterthought. They were the plan all along. He goes on, God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago, and he said, all nations will be blessed through you. So taking the good news to the Gentiles was always God's plan. But now here comes, here comes Paul's clincher point, and it's a statement that, that makes me weep at its magnitude. Paul says this, so all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. You know, lately I've been asked variations of the exact same question. And essentially, here's the question. First of all, the question usually begins with a preface, something like this. Yeah, I appreciate, Mike, that you have such an enthusiasm for grace and all, but, and then comes the question, but does it really matter? Is it really such a big deal whether we depend on whether we depend on the law or grace or maybe even a hybrid of both? Doesn't God save everyone who's at least trying to be good? Here's my answer. Yes, it matters. It really 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 matters. Paul's next sentence tells it all. He says, but those who depend on the law to make them right with God are under his curse. 
For the scriptures say, Cursed is anyone who does not observe and obey all the commands that are written in God's book of the law. So you see, there's only one way for me to find God and to reach God. There's only one way for you to reach God, and it is for God to reach you. It is his unqualified, no-strings-attached grace that comes solely by means of Faith, never by the law. So yeah, it really matters. God seeks relationship, not religion. Perhaps that line is too cute by half. I mean, of course, Christianity is, in its deepest sense, a religion. It comes with its share of traditions, habits, and language, many of which we've just picked up over the centuries. And maybe it would be more accurate to say God seeks relationship, not bad religion. The great American theologian, Jonathan Edwards, I think the greatest theologian in American history, he wrote, he who has doctrinal knowledge and no relationship is not engaged in the business of religion. You know, when I was an alcoholic, I lay drunk on the bathroom floor, peeing on my pants, waiting to throw up again. And at that moment, I'm going to tell you right now, I wasn't craving religion. I needed a relationship. And I got one. I found Almighty God. A dear friend of ours buried her newborn baby this week. I can't comprehend the agony of that. But I can tell you she's not grasping for religion. She's grateful for a relationship. God doesn't cover, covet our sacrifices. He tells us that in Scripture. He doesn't examine our statements of doctrinal accuracy. He seeks our hearts. He wants, our, he wants his kids back. He wants you, almighty God seeks you. He wants you back. He wants you back. That's the beauty of the gospel. You can see why Paul is so angry about it because this is such a beautiful gospel and he doesn't want it to be tarnished by making it into a practical religion because it's about a relationship. Do you have that relationship? And I'm serious. Do you have that? If you have, don't have that, but you want it, don't leave today without it. Don't leave without coming and talking to myself, talking to Pastor Dana. She's right there in the back. Wave your hand if you don't know who that is. Talking to one of our prayer warriors. Any prayer warriors? Wave your hands and say, I want that. I need a relationship with God. How do I get there? How we get there? Don't leave without that. And uh, watch what happens when you get it. Because he doesn't stop at just that. He's going he's gonna to grab a hold of you and he's going to transform you. From the inside out. Father God, I just pray for each person here. I pray that each one will, will know what it is to have a deeply felt personal relationship with God. A relationship that grasps that, that you are our King, that you are Almighty God, that you are so much bigger than we are. A relationship that understands our indebtedness to you. A relationship that understands who you are and who we are. But a relationship. A relationship. Father to son, father to daughter. Father God, there are some people here that seek that, don't have that. They've been trying to find it. They've been working hard to find it. Lord, I pray that they will not leave today without experiencing you. Father God, I pray that, that you will be, you will just continue to follow people home today and and just keep 
bothering them with your Holy Spirit, saying, I want you. I want you back. I want my kids back. Father God, I thank you so much for your love. I thank you for scripture. I thank you for your grace. I thank you that Jesus came and died on that Roman torture device. Forgave us our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Michelle's going to come up here because she's better looking than I am. And uh, for, among many other reasons. But I also want to let you know some things that are happening today. And one of which is this afternoon. Well, first of all, our prayer warriors. Where are our prayer warriors? Raise your hand. Wait, raise them high so people can see you. Our prayer warriors are mighty. And I think we should change them to the mighty prayer warriors. If you need prayer today, don't leave without prayer. And so come, there'll be one right over here if you would like to just for more privacy or just grab hold of one of these prayer warriors and say, I need prayer. Pray for me. Okay? Do not leave home without it. Okay? But uh, this afternoon. We have Gorilla Faith this afternoon at 530 and uh, we are in the book of Romans, and it's just been a fantastic conversation to dig into Romans together. So I invite you to come and join in the conversation. Right. If you would like to know more about what does Paul mean? What is he, what's Paul talking about when he talks about the gospel? It's a good place to start. Good friends, and it's, it's a safe place to ask questions. 530, right in the back. And tomorrow morning, men's breakfast. Men. I don't know much about this, so Mike, you're going to have to I, tell I'll, us. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I am so grateful. We have Mick Ray, who has, has uh, invited us all. He's really kind of galvanized us men. We're going to meet here at 10 o'clock, 10 to noon. We're going to make breakfast burritos together. We're going to share what's going on in our lives. Mick's going to share his story. And I don't know, we might do some scratching and spitting, whatever it is that men do. And, uh, but we're going to encourage each other as men, because you know what we need? We need some, a few good men to, who will, who will, uh, serve Christ. And I'm excited about this. So 10 o'clock tomorrow, come. If you know some people who you think should be here, get on the phone, say, Hey, get over to the church. You're a man. Come on over. <laughs> And then in the afternoon at 5 o'clock, we have coffee with the pastor at Scooters. Uh, it's the Scooters at 27th and Pine Lake. And it's just a great time to um, just get together, have conversation, be inspired. Come and ask questions. If you have, if you want to, you know, have the pastor's ear, um, well, then you can talk to Dana. And if you want, <laughs> and if you're... But if you just want to have a good time, come talk to me. No, <laughs> no, please come and join us. And, it, and you can have a little coffee and just encouragement. On Wednesday, we will not be having Pathfinders this week. Since the Pathfinders are doing Honors Fest this morning, uh, they will not be doing Pathfinders this week. But we will be doing Super Cal. Uh, Cal stands for Connecting on Wednesday. And we're ha we have three fantastic classes right now. How to Pray, led by Pastor Dana. Uh, we also have Crafting Friendship, led by Howie. So if you have uh, knitting, crocheting, needlework projects that you want to come and do as a community and, and build friendships, that's awesome. And then Susan... Macrame, anything, just bring it. That's true, yeah. Actually, we had somebody come in and um, they were coloring while we were, so uh, there's, there's, just think of the options. And then the third class we have is Music Jam, which Susan is leading out in. If, so if you want to come and jam with the, with the New Creation Praise Band, that's time to do it. All right, please come, please come. I'm excited about this one, Valentine's Dinner next Saturday night. And it's, this is not a couple's thing, this is a family thing. If you're single... I promise you're going to like this. This is, this is for everybody. We're just going to have a good time. We're going to have a little talent show. We're going to have pizza. And make sure if you get a chance to uh, RSVP, and of course we're all getting to be super hip, so you can use the QR code, which is uh, out on the poster, or just use that right there, and you can RSVP right now. And just say, I'm coming, and I'm bringing this many people. And we, we want you to be there. Please come. 
Also, um, Peggy asked me to let you all know if you're interested in being part of the Garden of Eaton, that garden outside that we did last summer, we're starting it up again, we're getting going. Next Sabbath, they'll be having a potluck and meeting after church. So if you're interested in being part of Garden of Eaton, Garden of Eaton, uh, <laughs> stick around. <laughs> Bring some food and stick around. That's right. Thank you all for being here we today. We also have a transfer. Of oh, we do. That's right. That's right. So a lot of you remember Gabby. Gabby grew up in our church, and then she had the audacity to grow up and to go to college. She met a boy. They got married, and they live in oh, Texas yeah. now. And this is actually uh, something she did when she was in Pathfinders. We still have it, amazingly enough, here at the church. But uh, this is the second reading, and she's going to the Arlington Church there in Arlington, Texas. So all in favor of, uh, of sending our best wishes to her and, uh, and sending her off, just raise your hand, and we'll just let her know. That, the, um, if you've ever noticed the little rubber ducky up there, she left that there when she went to college to remind us of her each week. So <laughs> that's, that's from Gabby. <laughs> so it remains. Yes. It remains. Um, Virginia asked me to remind you also, there's a, a note about this in the bulletin, but starting March 2, we're going to be doing a children's church the first Sabbath of each month. And so um, mm -hmm. that's going to be fun. So invite your friends to come and join us on the first Sabbath. For It's going to be children's church sermons. So the kids will stay with us until um, right after the or Right after, right after, after singing and then we'll go. Yeah, so that'll be so, a nice addition. Yeah. Pray with me. Father God, I pray a blessing on our congregation here. And I pray that you will give us faith. Give us the faith of Jesus. Give us the faith to believe. Because, Lord, even the act of faith is, is part of that gift of grace. And I pray that you will, that with that faith, that you will, that you will allow ourselves to die with you at that cross, to, to go into that tomb with you in that tomb, and then to to rise again, no longer alive, but with Christ living in us. Father God, I pray that you bless this Sabbath afternoon, that it be a time of, of great fellowship, and I pray that uh, you'll keep us safe even on these roads because there are potholes the size of the Grand Canyon. And so keep us safe and bring us together again. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful Sabbath, a wonderful Sabbath.